Imagine a world where skyscrapers don't just house offices, but entire farms stacked on top of each other growing lettuce, herbs, and even strawberries right in the middle of crowded cities. No soil, no sunlight, just futuristic towers filled with glowing LED lights. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, that was the dream of vertical farming, a dream that attracted billions of dollars, hyped up startups, and bold promises of solving food shortages and climate change. But fast forward to today, and many of those vertical farm companies are shutting down, going bankrupt, or quietly disappearing. So, what exactly happened? Why did one of the most hyped ideas in agriculture turn into such an epic failure? Let's break it down. Vertical farming wasn't just a cool idea. It was marketed as the future of food. The concept was simple. Instead of growing crops across acres of farmland, why not grow them indoors, in vertical stacks, closer to the consumers? It promised less water usage up to 90% less than traditional farming. It promised year-round harvests unaffected by weather, pests, or climate change. It promised local food production, cutting down on transportation costs and carbon footprints. On paper, it looked perfect. Feed a growing population, save the planet, and make money doing it. And for a while, investors loved it. Hundreds of millions of dollars poured into companies like Aero Farms, Plenty, and Infarm. Even big names like Jeff Bezos and SoftBank jumped in. But here's the catch. Farming indoors isn't cheap. Those glowing LED lights? They burn a massive amount of electricity. The climate-controlled rooms? They require constant air conditioning, heating, and humidity control. And then there's the technology itself, hydroponics, and aeroponics require pumps, sensors, and a whole infrastructure that costs millions to build and maintain. All of that makes vertical farming incredibly expensive compared to traditional farming. At the end of the day, they weren't growing cheap staple crops like wheat, rice, or corn. Instead, most vertical farms stuck to high-value greens like lettuce, basil, and microgreens because that's all the economics allowed. But even then, a bag of lettuce grown indoors often cost double or triple the price of regular lettuce from outdoor farms. Consumers didn't want to pay that premium, and grocery stores weren't willing to stock much of it. So despite all the hype, vertical farms struggled to compete with the simplicity and low cost of traditional agriculture. One by one, the cracks started to show. Aero Farms, one of the biggest names in the industry, filed for bankruptcy in 2023 after burning through over $100 million in funding. Infarm, a European vertical farming startup once valued at over a billion dollars, announced mass layoffs and pulled out of most markets. Even the heavily funded Plenty, backed by SoftBank and Jeff Bezos, has faced delays and massive financial losses. Reports suggest that for every dollar earned, some vertical farms were spending five to six dollars just to keep the lights on. Investors who once believed vertical farming was the next green revolution started backing away. What was once seen as a solution to world hunger was now being called an unsustainable business model. So why did vertical farming fail so badly? The truth is, it was a mix of overpromises, high costs, and misaligned expectations. The technology works, but it only works for a limited number of crops and at a very high cost. Instead of feeding the world, vertical farms ended up producing pricey salads for wealthy urban consumers. And while the idea of farming and skyscrapers sounded futuristic, the energy problem was never solved. With rising electricity costs, it simply wasn't financially sustainable. Does this mean vertical farming is dead forever? Not necessarily. Some small-scale farms, especially those connected to restaurants or premium markets, are still doing well. Advances in renewable energy and cheaper LED lights could make the model more viable in the future. But for now, the grand vision of vertical farms feeding entire cities remains a dream that collapsed under its own weight. The story of vertical farming is a powerful reminder that not every futuristic idea is practical, and not every startup hype leads to real change. So, what do you think should we give vertical farming another chance? Or is it just a high-tech fantasy that doesn't belong in the real world? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the future of food and technology.